Because people know that I talk about you all the time. It's like a couple Houstonian. I talk about all the Houston ladies. Uh, Meg Thee Stallion, uh, Beyonce, and you. Y'all my top three. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me find out who this mystery man is. Don't be claiming my bestie, but not claiming my bestie. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. 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 Let what me you find want? Out. Thanks for the tea. Let me tell you. I said all that to say, you know what? Me and Keisha just want you to know that you are special. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. That's so sweet. <laughs> Y'all are special, too. You know, oh. you know, we're starting the interview now because we're going to start talking, but you know, um, with this record out and you being on top of the world, on top of everything on tour, TV, everything, Lizzo. Um, and people say you can't have it all when you're in this industry, right? And you seem to be able to have it all, especially even having a man as well. How have how has that been? How have you navigated that in this industry when people tell you, you know what, don't put your man out there? We, you know, everybody should know that you have a boyfriend. You kind of got to be appealing to everybody. How have you been able to navigate that? That has been a, I mean, that's a great question because it has been a very interesting ride, I will say, and a lesson and a journey. I don't think there's like the right answer to, you know, how do you have a significant other as a pop star or whatever, you know, as a sex symbol? <laughs> <laughs> how do you do it? How does she do it? Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's just like communication is because it really is about me and him. So mm -hmm. all this other shit comes and goes and people going to say what they want. They're going to think what they want. They And, you know, it is what it is. But between me and him, we have like real conversations about what we choose to share. Everything anyone has ever seen of us, except for the paparazzi photos, is you know, <laughs> something that we have both decided on. And I'm very careful about him and he's very careful about, he don't play about me. So, you know, um, I think it comes down to just having good communication. I do have it all because I'm not trying to have all of that shit. I, I want what's for me. You know what mm. I'm saying? And when you want what's for you, you get it. Mm. And that makes I you special. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> You go on back. It's, it's special. Such a huge record. There's you, every now and then we come get around these with these records um, that could play in any ar arena and stadiums. You could play them. You know when you're walking through Macy's or Nordstrom's, you could play them on the radio. When you recorded this song, did you know it was going to hit like this, Lizzo? I was really emotional when I wrote the song. Mm. So I always know when I'm really emotional when I'm writing a song. It does have that appeal to you know that mass appeal i know it's going to touch people and even like the musicians in the room are like this is almost like good as hell part two you know mm -hmm. this is the song that lizzo fans are just gonna really need to hear and want to hear and be like ah, you know all the other stuff about damn time you know it's all fun and games and partying and uh, even though about damn time has heart too but special really gets you right here so I kind of knew that. And for me, I never imagined commercial success. Like with special, I'm not like number one record. Yeah. For me, it's just like special is one of those songs that are going to make you cry now and 20 years later when you put it on. Mm. It's, what you know about this record that you put on, you know, 30 years from now when you at the cookout or when you with your with your person, you know what I'm saying? And you're playing it with your kids. It's one of those songs you can sing to your kids. You can sing to your parents. You can sing to your friend. You can sing to yourself. And every night when I perform that song, we all cry. I cry. Somebody was like, why does we keep crying at every show? I saw a comment. It's like, because when I do special People in the audience, we're connecting in that moment. They're singing, clapping. I'm crying. They're crying every single night. So I love writing songs that have that kind of like emotional synergy that just help people. Because that's, mm -hmm. that's the point. Mm -hmm. I want to cry right now. I just want to cry. Get him, please. Okay. Look. <laughs> what makes you and this friendship so special, Lizzo? What makes what? You and Scissor's friendship so special. You know, we've just known each other for a long time. And I think that that is rare in the music industry for people to, you know, have a relationship like that. Like I knew her when I wasn't releasing music off of a label. Like I was just like an indie artist living in Minneapolis. 
and she was on TDE and was like the coolest thing in the world and came to town, you know, performed a show. And I was like, whoa, can I get a selfie with you? It was like, uh, we went from, can I get a selfie with you? Yeah. to Oh, I'm opening for you on a Red Bull tour to, oh girl, hop on my arena tour and I'm gonna hop on your arena tour and do a song. Like it's wild actually to act, watch somebody grow like that and I think that's what's really kind of unique about our relationship we weren't friends with each other for like clout or because it was trendy like we just really gravitated towards each other and you yeah. can actually see it's really genuine it definitely comes off across you know when everybody's watching you guys it comes off extremely genuine and everybody deserves friends like that okay they said a wrap up so we gotta wrap up J Max the first 10 minutes talk <laughs> oh no I, I love her it's just like family it's like my little sister is calling in I really didn't have any questions. I just want to see her before the next I, concert. I got so. a question. What? Nobody's been able to find this for me. I did so many freestyles for the Mad Hatter Morning Show. So uh -huh. many. And I even won tickets a few oh, times. What? Yeah. What's up, y'all? What you got to say? What you got to say? Who's on the mic? We had a screw today. And I, was, I did. I did. And even afterwards, they was like, yo, what's your name? I was like, I'm Lizzo. And they were like, yo, you can really rap. I have freestyles. I don't know if y'all have audio recordings of everything. <laughs> I mean, we do. We'll there's, have to look. There's a room that's in the back of the station that has tapes of the Mad Hatter Morning Show for many, many years. I don't I'm know. I'm through them. J Max gonna have to look through them. Yeah, but it's in the back room and there's tapes of all the years um, of the Mad Hatter Morning Show. I have so many Boy, freestyles. I would call before my bus and I would just wait. So I would love to hear that if y'all can find it. You know what? I'm going to try to find it the next time you come out here. I better get to come out on stage and say something. Uh-huh. I know. I'm demanding. I'm demanding. I'll find you. Listen, you, you're invited to the Funplex party. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> well, you have thank a nice you. day. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right, y'all. I appreciate you. All right. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, babe. Nobody told you to